بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله I'm Ashraf Khatir, Professor of Surgery at Mansoura University, Egypt and today's talk is about the breast uh, Starting by an anatomical consideration of the breast What's the definition of the breast? The breast, by definition, is a modified apocrine sweat gland that uh, is present within the superficial fascia of the anterior chest wall and of course there is no deep fascia here to allow expansion of the breast during lactation. Number two, what's the function of the breast? The breast has two main functions. The first function is an aesthetic function. Aesthetic function, it is a symbol of femininity and this function is under control of the estrogen hormone that allows enlargement of the breast. And the second function is secretion and ejection of milk. This is the lactating function. So acidic function and lactating function, hence the name mammo from mammalian. Mammo, mammoplasty, mammotome, mammo, mammo, mammography. So due to secretion of milk and lactation. So there is two main functions. Number one, acidic function. Number two, lactating function. What about the development of the breast? This is the third item. The breast develops from what we call ectodermal milk line or milk ridge that goes from the axilla to the groin, but most of this line disappears except that over the breast region to produce the breast. So the breast is ectodermal in origin. The next item, what are the anomalies of the breast? Actually, there is anomalies of the breast and anomalies of the nipple areola complex. Speaking about the anomalies of the breast, as we will see in the next photos, the first anomaly, there is no breast, what we call amasia. Amasia, no breast. And one of the famous syndromes associated with amasia is what we call Poland syndrome. And in this syndrome, as we will see in the next photos, amasia, the absence of the pectoralis major, and webbing of the fingers, as we see in this photo. This is what we call Poland syndrome, amasia. The reverse of amasia is polymasia, what we call supernumerary or accessory breast. And usually the site of this accessory breast in both axilla, usually it is bilateral and enters in the differential diagnosis of what we call axillary lipoma. This is accessory breast or supernumerary breast. The next anomaly, the third anomaly, is what we call micromasia, or what we call underdeveloped breast, as, as we see in this photo. Uh, micromasia is treated by what we call augmentation mammoplasty, for example, usage of silicone implants or natural augmentation surgery. So the treatment of micromasia is augmentation mammoplasty. And the last anomaly, the next anomaly, is what we call diffuse or virginal hypertrophy of the breast. This is actually gigantism of the breast by huge enlargement of the breast. And the treatment, of course, is what we call reduction mammoplasty. Reduction mammoplasty, as we see in this uh, photo, this is a photo for diffuse breast hypertrophy. And the last anomaly, as we see in this photo, what we call tuberous breast. The breast looks like tubules or small tubes. And of course, the treatment of this tuberous breast is also augmentation mammoplasty to expand and increase the size of this breast. By summarizing, amasia, polymasia, micromasia, gigantism or diffuse hypertrophy, and lastly, tuberous breast. These are the anomalies of the breast. What are the anomalies of the nibble? Anomalies of the nibble. Number one, athelia. Athelia, absence of the nibble. Athelia. The reverse is polythelia. The reverse is polythelia or ectopic nibbles. What is the site for these ectopic nibbles? As we see in this photo, usually over the milk line or milk ridge as we see in this photo. The next anomaly of the nibble is what we call pubertal, pubertal nibble retraction. It does not occur except after development of the breast with puberty. There is in drawing of the uh, nibble inside and this to be differentiated from what we call acquired nibble inversion. What's the cause of acquired nibble inversion? Acquired nibble inversion usually occurs due to fibrosis that retracts the nibble areola complex inward. So this fibrosis may be due to fat necrosis, may be due to chronic abscess, may be due to ductectasia, may be due to cancer, fibrosis of cancer. All these four 
causes can cause fibrosis that retracts the nipple areola complex. How to differentiate between pubertal nipple retraction, which is natural or normal, and acquired nipple retraction? Usually, the acquired nipple retraction is recent, not dating since puberty. It's recent, maybe since four months, three months, and so. It is recent. It is always unilateral, while pubertal nipple retraction may be bilateral. This is always unilateral due to cause. So, it is always unilateral. By feeling the nipple areola complex, there is hard induration below, of course, due to fibrosis. And the last difference is a presence of a groove due to retraction of the nipple groove in the acquired cases not present in the pubertal nipple uh, retraction. What about the gross anatomy of the breast? Number one, what about the lie? We can say that the breast lies totally within the superficial fascia of the anterior chest wall except, except what we call the axillary tail of spence. Axillary tail of spence that enters the axilla through a foramen of Langer as we see in this photo. Then, what about the extent of the breast? We have actual breast extent and the protuberant part of the breast. As we see in this photo, the protuberant part of the breast, which is the breast part which is seen to most of the people, the protuberant part extends above from the second rib, below to the sixth rib, medial to the parasternal line, laterally into the mid-axillary line. What about the actual breast extension? The actual breast extension is beyond that. So in lactating female, in lactating female, the whole breast enlarges, and when you do total mastectomy, you must remove the actual breast tissue, not the protuberant part of the breast. This is important to know the actual extent of the breast. The actual extent of the breast, as we see in this photo, extends up into the clavicle, below into the eighth rib, and medially into the midline, not the parasternal line, laterally into the posterior ax axillary line or the anterior border of the latissimus dorsi muscle. This is the actual extension of the breast. To do total mastectomy, you must remove the actual breast, not the protuberant part of the breast. In lactation, the whole breast en enlarges, including the protuberant part and the actual part. What about the nibble, location of the nibble? The location of the nibble, it, it is present in the fourth intercostal space, fourth intercostal space at the mid-clavicular line. This is the extent of the breast. What about the deep relations to the breast? We see in this photo, the upper two thirds of the breast lies over the pectoralis major separated by the pectoral fascia, separated from it by the pectoral fascia. And in the lower third, medially, there is the anterior rectus sheath and somewhat laterally, there is the serratus anterior and external oblique muscles. Lastly, what about the breast quadrants? We can say that the breast quadrants, as we see in this photo, they are seven quadrants, seven quadrants. The upper outer, the upper inner, the lower outer, the lower inner, and what we call the central quadrant. The central quadrant is a quadrant just behind the nibble areola complex. It's called central quadrant of the breast. And we can consider the axillary tail, the sixth quadrant of the breast, and there is a hidden quadrant, what we call the inframammary part of the breast, and you must examine all these quadrants either by the surgeon or by the female itself during breast self-examination. The female, I must educate the female to examine the seven quadrants during breast self-examination and see you in the next episode, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.